So let's say you're up in Arizona, Nevada. You're in Redding, California. You're in Los Angeles, California. You are in Florida or any of these very hot places or very humid places. And this car comes in complaining every time it gets 95, 105 degrees, the AC just falls on its face. You hook up your gauges and you have about 400 PSI and, and you, you just going, geez, this must be overfilled. That's all simple. The fans are working, so it must be overfilled. So let's check something. Let's, uh, right now it's cool, it's only 80 degrees, but you would say, let me check something. Let me just take out the refrigerant. Wow, it's not over full. I measured it. Well, let me charge it back up. Maybe it was contaminated and most shops don't have a refrigerant identifier, so it'd be purely speculation and guessing. But they charge it up with what they know is 100% refrigerant to what the factory says. And it's 110 degrees outside and they still have 400 PSI and maybe it's cycling out and not working. And you're like, wow, I got, something's plugged up. Maybe uh, the expansion valve isn't working good. And so they go and Mr. Customer, we think your expansion valve is bad. So of course, this is usually one of the common things. They change the expansion valve, they fill it back up. It's still not working. Wow, something, maybe the compressor's bad. Well, this is the last thing. If you're building 400 PSI of pressure, your compressor's working real good. But for some reason, I don't get it. They think, some technicians think the compressor's bad when you have too much pressure. I just don't get this, but it happens. And I've had a few people tell me this and I've gotten customers who've had that happen to them. And so they change the compressor. Well, Mr. Customer, oh, everything looks good. The condenser is not plugged or anything. It's dirty because it just came from a body shop maybe six months ago. And it has this brand new, beautiful condenser on it. Uh, you know, some cars, they have receiver driver accumulators. I've had people tell me, oh, the receiver dryer, the accumulator is plugged in. Let's change the receiver dryer accumulator. Now, this one just has a desiccant sock. So your receiver dryer and desiccant are all located right here. So... Hmm, what else could be wrong? Jeez, what can I say? Well, as you can see, here's the OEM. And they fit. They're the exact same size. But what you notice here, see that 39? The 39 is how many coolant passages are going right there. You see that number 61? The 61 is how many coolant passages for refrigerant there are to pass. They cheated you. They spaced them out like a kid cheating on his writing assignment. When the teacher says, write me a whole page, and the kid writes with really big letters, and he spaces them out, and he leaves a really big gap, and he thinks he's writing and getting away and fooling the teacher that he's writing a lot on a page. You know those kids? Well, that's what we have going on here. It's the same size piece of paper, but instead of 61 cooling passages, they spread them out, and there's only 39. And then making your letters wider apart so you fool the teacher with these big, broad letter, le letters so it makes every word wider so you could write less. Remember those kids? I was one of those kids. So you got 19 in one inch. In one inch, you have 19 cooling fins. In one inch, you have 22 cooling fins. So they cheat you again. And that's what they did in there. And the one thing I can't show you, cause I can't split this open and show you on the inside, but I can show you, maybe I can focus inside of it. Let me see if I could get in there. I've shown this many times, but if you actually go inside and, oh damn, I don't have a uh, light. You go inside and I can get this to focus in there. Can you see no, you could barely see. You really need light in there. I'm sorry, guys. There you go. Do you see those cooling fins, the flat plates? Do you see those little tiny fins inside? You know how incredibly small those things are? Those are, these ones particular, those ones are actually smaller than the ball bearing in the size of one of those really expensive, fine Japanese, or even a ballpoint, a big pen, but a Japanese ball bearing inside a ink pen, that little ball bearing could not fit inside the gaps between those fins that are inside there. And if you open one of these up and you cut it in half, it's a big old massive hole, and it only has like six fins going across, and this is like 12, 
or 18 fins going across. Microchannel condensers are what are called critically charged condensers. And when you try to cheat like this, you really mess up the thermal dynamic, the performance of the heat rejection of the system. Uh, right here, I was just gonna show you, uh, and I can't do a comparison, but I'm doing a drop across the condenser. This is another thing, and it's cool out. It's only 79, 80 degrees out right now, so there's no real load over it, so you will see nothing wrong other than, uh, let's see. So right now we only we have 42 we have 40 degree drop across the condenser now this is supposed to be a high efficiency condenser and usually if i threw this back on there instead of seeing a 40 degree drop 101 to 140 that's taking the temperature of the line going in right there and the line coming out you would probably see with this one 25 degree drop because this one's able to reject a lot more heat because of the amount of cooling tubes, surface area, and fins. You would see a 25 degree drop instead of a 40 degree drop. And that's what happens when you purchase some of the low quality aftermarket condensers. But they fit and the customer will get cooling out of his dash and the customer doesn't know he got screwed because when he goes somewhere where there's hot weather, this falls on his face. Some of the cars, the pressure goes so, so high, it gets up right around 390, 400, and you notice the engine shaking in hot weather. And the customer says, and if they have a really small engine, customer might complain, when I turn my air conditioning on, when it's like 95, 105 degrees, I'm, when I accelerate, I have no power. When I'm at idle and I'm at a stoplight, my engine is more rough than it usually is. And it's because it cannot dissipate the heat, so the pressure is hitting like 400 PSI, and so much strain is on the compressor that the engine has to struggle and consume more fuel just to do that. And that's what happens when you get a cheap aftermarket condenser. And do we have the box around here? I'm gonna see if I could find the box. Who sold this condenser? Who is the responsible parties? That's what I wanna know. Hmm. I'm looking for Jack the Ripper of condenser sales and I cannot see anything. The box must be gone. All right, guys, I won't be able to reveal the responsible party for this particular year making model vehicle uh, for selling a piece of garbage like this, but that is what we get when we get those kind of people. Uh, what else we got? We got, uh, we got 43 degrees out the ass, so customer would never know. It seems pretty good because we're only at 80 degrees. It's real low temperature right now, so there's no real big difference. And if I link the tool... Now, the one thing I did notice... Uh, actually, it's not. We have cycling fans, and as our pressure gets up there to 170... I could, I could feel, I could just, yeah, I could feel the fans. These are pulsating fans. So on this particular vehicle, it's pulsating up and down. It's constantly up and down on the fans. So you'll never get a steady reading because these fans are constantly up and down, up and down all the time. All right, that's all I want this video. Can I get you a TD across? Ah, let's go here. Let's get you a TD across the heat exchanger, internal heat exchanger. So let's get... This will be from the evaporator. So this is right here. And let's get that right there. Okay, we're out of the evaporator. This is the heat exchanger where the liquid hot gas is got going in. And let's get the temperature here on the other side. So let's take that off there. And we're gonna see how the evaporator changes as it exchanges heat from the hot liquid to the cold suction to get to the other side right there okay there we go let's wait for the temperatures to stabilize and let me get back out of there get me back get me back get me back get me back here link tool and two there you go 
this is the temperature drop across this internal heat exchanger. So this is liquid. You see all these little lumps? There's liquid hot refrigerant coming from here, going through and then coming out and the cold is cooling it off. So you can see the loss, you can measure it. Where do you go? Why am I losing? There you go. We're 40 degrees right here, right where that temperature sensor is, it's 41 degrees. Coming in through the same tube, coming right here, it's 70 degrees. Now let's look at the liquid. Here's the hot liquid coming in from the condenser. So we're gonna take that one right there, see the red on the end? We're gonna put it right there. And we're gonna take it off the suction line. And we're gonna put it on the liquid line. Right there. Okay. Now, what you're gonna get to see is how this cold gas from the suction cools down and subcools it even more than it goes in at. So it goes in right there, it comes out right here. So we're going in at 88 degrees. No, we're going in at 103 degrees, right here. See the red, uh, why are we back? Worse. I just lost. Yep, we're red right there. Red one right there. Red one right there. We're going in at 104 degrees. So right here, as it goes in, it's 104 degrees. But when it's coming out to go to the expansion valve, because it's going in this direction, it's 86 degrees. And it's going in that direction to the So you get to see both ways as it goes from cold suction line to warm suction line. As it goes from hot liquid going in to cool liquid coming out to the expansion valve. So this is all temperature drops. I gave you a temperature drop there, which it was like 40 degrees. If I put this back on, it would be about 25 degrees, but because it has a piece of shit aftermarket condenser, it's 40 degree difference. And we can see the temperature drop going across the internal heat exchanger. All right, that's it for now. I am actually going to miss my last job of the day because I took two videos today and I spent this extra time and looking at the time and how far I have to travel. I gotta call them back up and push them up to tomorrow. My tomorrow is already booked. So that means I leave the house without breakfast. I eat in my car, get there extra early before they open up and bust my ass tomorrow because I did two sets of two videos today instead of one. All right guys, I'll see you.